So I created a tool that does this. I can just grab any texture here, for example, this one. I can just put it here and I will have a new mesh here. I can just put this one, for example. I can just grab it here and I will have a new mesh. And this is great. This is how I made all this and a lot of ornaments in this game. So I'm going to show you how I make these tools using the modeling tools. The first thing you need to make sure you have is the geometry scripting tool. So you go to plugins and you type geometry script. And here you say that geometry script is already enabled. Uh, you click on here, you restart the editor and you are good to go. That's going to be very simple. I will just create a dynamic mesh actor. So go here, go to blueprint and just type generate it. There you go. Generated dynamic mesh actor this is what you want so click here and it will call my bp automatic mesh and as soon as you have that you can just drag it into the world here so nothing nothing is here of course uh we we need to add some things in the blueprint so let's double click on this and here you don't really need anything you will just go to the event graph okay and there is an event specifically for this actor called on build generated mesh. Okay, so as soon as you do that, uh, everything that you change here, it will rebuild the mesh. So what can you do here? Well, you can append different things. Like for example, you can append a box, okay? And as soon as you do that, you will see that I have a box here. Now you can change the dimensions here, like 300, for example, in the compile, and you will have something like this. But in our case, what we need to do is to put a plane. So we're going to do that. We're going to go here and do append. And here we'll see a rectangle X and Y. And that's good enough for me. I think this should be enough. So let's compile. And now we have our rectangle. Now you see it's more or less the same uh, width and height, but it doesn't have much polygons. Okay. So I need to add some, some subdivisions. Uh, I will put the, them here. Okay. The steps width and steps height. And I will compile. And now you will see that I have some polygons here to work with. Okay. Now, the next thing I need to do is to apply the tessellation for my mesh, right? So let's go back here and go to apply ENT PN tessellation. Okay, so you have a bunch of options here. Uh, you have the tessellation level. So we're going to expose this. We're going to go here and put leave it at tessellation level. Okay. And let's just compile. And now that you have this, uh, everything still like you have more polygons. The thing is, I want to change the number of polygons I have here on runtime. So what I want to do is to go to the tessellation level here and click here is like a open eyelid, like close eyelid, open your eyes, close your eyes. If you open the eyes here, it means it's a public variable. It will be here. Uh, if I search for it like tessellation that you have, tessellation level, I can put this number to zero and it will go back to normal. I can go back to one, two, or three. And as I continue, I can add more and more and more. Now, uh, this can scale up exponentially, so uh, just be careful with it, okay? So let me put a number of six for now. It should be good enough. Now, what we need to do is to displace. So each texture here, if I go here to my alpha ornament, I can just double click on this one to take a look at how it looks like. Uh, it's just a grayscale texture, right? So the grayscale, uh, meaning black, has the deepest areas and the whitest areas are the, uh, the one on the top. Okay, so what we're going to do is to grab these textures here. So we're going to go here and apply displays from texture map. And this is the target mesh. We're going to displace 
our plane. And here, this texture, I'm going to put it a variable here. I'm going to call it ornament texture. I'm going to make it public. OK, so what else you can do here? If you expand the options, uh, you can split struct pin. You will have like you have some options here, right? That you usually don't see because they are collapsed. And I want to change the magnitude. I want to put like displacement magnitude. Magnitude. There you go. And I want to put a value of 10 here, like for for starters. Okay, 10 should be good enough. Okay, so let's try it out and make sure this is this is public. All this is public. Okay, so let's go back here and let's let's look for our variables. There we are. Uh, tessellation level six, ornament texture. Uh, we're gonna grab something like uh, like this, for example. We're gonna put it here. And now that you see that it's kind of working, right? So what can you do here? I can increase the tessellation level to have like more polygons. You see that this is like not enough, so you can put something like ten if you want or fifteen. It will increase like the resolution of this. Now, if you compare this one to the one with eight, it's clearly a big difference. So you can just put like 15 and you will have like a nicer result. You can put 12, I think. Okay. And then the displacement magnitude, you can just like leave it like at 10 or it, if you increase like more, it will be, it, it will just be, you know, uh, thicker, right? Um, you can play with the value, any kind of value you want. Now, uh, by default, if you check this mesh, we actually have uh, a back face, right? So how do we do that? Okay, What we can do here is to apply a mesh cut to remove the areas that basically are, are like here, like this plane. So what I can do is just crack this here and just apply mesh. And as soon as you do that, you will have a bunch of options. Okay. Uh, first, the cut frame, let's right click and struct the plane. And we will put this as a variable. We will put like cut location. Okay. Um, we can leave it public. But let's see what, what it does for now. So you can see that it starts cutting the top. So if I make this public, and try to change the position of this, like for example, minus three, you will see that it's cutting uh, backwards, right? So what you need to do is to reverse this. So we can go to options, split struct. And what you can do here is options, flip cut side, promote to variable, flip uh, mirror, okay? Compile and this one we can just put it like this. Okay. I wouldn't need to make it public. But oh, there you go. So we just need to find a way like it's like minus two. That's too much. Minus four. Minus five. Minus six. Minus six is a little bit too much. Minus five. So it looks like in minus five, like we still have our our mesh here. So we're gonna leave it like that. Now, uh, if you take a look at this one, like I told you, like this one has a back face. And now that I remove this part, I can just mirror this. So what I can do is to go here and put mirror mesh. And this will basically mirror the mesh. Okay, so let's see what happens. Now, this mirror is basically going in, in another, another way. So, what you what you need to do is to basically let's play with the options let's split this and also let's change the position of this like split struct plane and this location we're gonna promote it to a mirror frame location let's leave it like that and make it public okay the next thing uh you can options flip cut site if you want so if we put it there nothing will change if, if we leave it like that, like, okay, like 
it's kind of happening here, but it's like too close. So this is where I will play with my variables here. So I can just go here and let me find my variables. There you go. My location will be my minus three, for example, minus four. Minus seven. Uh, you see, like in minus seven, it starts going away. So I can just put like minus four or minus three looks like a nice number. Okay. Um, so I'm going to leave this minus three as my default value. Uh, normally, you wouldn't want to change this, but just in case, we don't really know the height map information whenever we want to put these things. Now, we are almost there. Uh, almost there. Uh, and also, there's some parts here that are, uh, I'm not liking. Okay, so uh, I fix it. We just need to play with the mirror here, the mirror plane location. If it's cutting too much, like minus three, that's too much. Minus four, minus five. Uh, minus five looks like a nice number. You can put minus six if you want. And you see that here you already have the the frame. Uh, you don't really need to cut it. Not that I, not that I notice. You can just put minus five, and you're good to go. Okay. So uh, there is a problem here. Uh, it's a little bit too sharp. You can see like these meshes are like this and everything. So what you can do is smooth it out a little bit. So let's just go here and apply iterative smooth mesh. And what we will do is to just go here and split. And these are the iterations. So we will just promote it like the smooth iterations and let's put it public and let's just put zero as a default value okay so as i increase the smoothness of this you can see that it's it's losing the sharpness of it but it's looking better a little bit better from distance like from here like it's too sharp maybe two looks like a like a decent number you can you can play with okay so that's nice. Uh, the next thing, uh, this is a little bit too smooth. So you can just pre-compute normals. So you can go here and recompute normals. And let's split the options. Always when you have something like this, you can see the options. But let's click compile. And now you will see that our normals are much better than before. Uh, let me delete this so you can see before and after here nice now there is one last thing i want to do and if you duplicate this you will see that your your frames drop really a lot and that is because we have a lot of uh, computation going on this is a dynamic mesh it's not a static mesh so let's find a way we can create a static mesh for this so let's create a function for this. We're going to go here to functions and we're going to kick plus. And then here we're going to we're going to call it something like convert to static mesh. Convert to static mesh. Okay? And now what I need to do is to get this dynamic mesh uh component. Uh if you see here you have a dynamic mesh component, the we need to get that. So get dynamic mesh component it should be this one okay or uh in a dynamic mesh component yeah there you go dynamic mesh component now let's go here it's the first thing we're gonna do and now what we're gonna do is to copy mesh to static mesh so we're gonna copy the dynamic mesh copy mesh to static mesh here this is the dynamic mesh and this is the static mesh asset we can put anything here and it will replace it so what we will do is to promote to a variable and it will be our static mesh to copy something like that now um what i want to do is to get a i i believe there's a this way get convert to validated get there you go if this is valid, go here and go to this one. And that's it. Now, how can we call this function? Uh, because if we go here, we don't have anything here. So what we can do is to 
go to the function here and then call in editor okay so now what you have here if you go here to your properties you will have a button that says convert to static mesh okay now you don't see the static mesh because this is not public so let's make it public and now it's here so what i can do for example i can go to modeling and i can put a box here right i can just i can just put this one here accept and now i have my box now if i press ctrl b i will know the position of this box in my content browser so i will just click here and what i can do is just put on this one here and now it will have my static mesh to copy and the next thing i can do is just just convert to static mesh and now when i move this it's much faster and i can even make it faster by double clicking on this mesh and you'll see it has quite a few triangles here i can just enable nanite and that's it and you notice that it already has the uvs for me the mirror and the playing cat uh actually a lot of these operations comes with automatic uvs so now what you can do is just basically uh duplicate this asset and put it wherever you want for example i can just uh duplicate this to do something like this or alternatively i can just uh put the uh, pattern tool and i can go to the y axis for example and i can increase the count here if i want okay and i can change this stand here like to something where they meet and then you have something like this where you have a lot of um a lot of patterns here you can accept and you will see that you have your dynamic actor and everything and you will have your patterns here now what you can do here uh is go to this static mesh for example now and let's change the let's change the the mesh here this one um let's look for something different like for example something something like that okay let's just put it here and now this is my new mesh what i will do is convert to static mesh and look what happens here is that all my meshes will be updated because my static mesh is being updated here and these are instances of my static mesh so hopefully uh this tool help you a lot I will put a link in the description where you can just download it. We have a lot of tools available for free. And it's a really handy tool that you can use in your projects. If you like this video, give us a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to learn how to create games, make sure you check our action game course where we create a game from scratch. And you can start the first lesson for free now. I'm out and I will see you in the next one. Bye.